Obviously, I like making videos. I mean, I spend my free time filming YouTube videos as a self-proclaimed videographer, reviewer, and short film director. Yeah, I'm a very talented bedroom artist, if I do say so myself, but alongside making visual masterpieces, I also like vintage and retro stuff. I got my 80s car, my 80s TV, my 80s music, and uh, 90s games. So of course, combining my two loves, I had to get myself a retro 80s video camera. And I did, and boy, this is now one of the more impractical things I own. But regardless, today I'll be showing it off, talk about how to use it, and film some test footage on it. So this should both be fun and a bit of a pain in the butt. So here we have a JVC GRC7U. What a name. Like literally, it's all just random characters. Like. I wonder how they marketed this thing, the JVC GRC7U VHSC camcorder. I feel like I'm reading a serial code rather than a product name. Now this model is actually related to the more famous and similarly named GRC1, uh, which is a earlier, more kind of heavy duty version of this camera. And it was actually the very first all-in-one VHS camcorder. So, Despite it being pretty technologically significant in camcorder history, it's often most remembered for appearing in Back to the Future, and apparently it was also in Stranger Things, though I haven't seen it myself. Obviously, being in Back to the Future and Stranger Things, the GRC1 is a lot more valuable and gets you more hipster prestige, but my GRC7U is much more practical, uh, being significantly smaller, lighter, and cheaper. And they both also use VHSC tapes, which are smaller than normal VHS tapes, but can be adapted to fit normal VCRs. I tried to do some more research on the camcorder, but there's not actually a lot of info on it from what I could find. But admittedly, let's be real, there aren't too many people trying to keep early VHS camcorders alive the same way they do film cameras. Now, funny enough, I actually own two of these things. Yeah, I wanted an 80s VHS camcorder as I got more into video and found my first one on Craigslist an hour away for 30 bucks if I remember right. It came with the complete gear and actually worked, but I quickly found out while shooting with it that something was wrong with the electronics, cause though the camera operated fine and recorded, the footage came out a lot more washed out than sample videos I found online. The color was so bad it almost looked black and white. I almost think it was dropped at some point cause you can see a dent on the top side, so maybe that caused the issue. About a year later, I got the itch to shoot retro video again, so I went on eBay and found this one for $70, and the seller said it all worked fine and it was complete, so I bought it and yeah, it seems to work fine. Now, if we just take a look at the camera, man is it retro. I'd say it's got that 80s angular and boxy design, but in all honesty, it's really only got the boxy design part. I mean, it's literally just a box with a lens slapped on. It does kind of have this interesting thing going on where half of it is this red box that holds the VHS tape, and the other is this more rounded black piece that is the actual camera and grip. I do really like the red they picked as, again, it's very 80s and the way it contrasts with the black adds to it. I'm glad they went with a red because it's a lot nicer than if they just made it boring gray or black. I will say this two-piece look is kind of strange too though as if you looked at the camera from either side, you probably wouldn't even guess they were the same single camera. Now, I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this big yellow and blue sticker on the side though. On one hand, it does add a little extra color, but also it just looks kind of ugly. I mean, do I really need to be reminded the camera weighs only 2.9 pounds every time I use it? Let's be clear. It's not three pounds, it's 2.9 pounds. It's the same way that I'm not 5'9", I'm 5'9 and a half, guys. You can measure me. Either way, this dumb sticker has been on the camera for over 30 years now, and I don't really feel like it's my place to be peeling it off at this point. I feel like I'd do it, then immediately think it looks weird without it. 
I do, however, like the high quality stamp on it though. Not high definition, high quality. Nothing I think of more when watching VHS tapes is how high the quality is. Now obviously when they made this thing, stylistic design probably wasn't the priority. This isn't modern day tech companies like Apple. Rather, they seem to focus on cramming as many features as possible in this thing. Seriously, I don't even know where to begin with everything, and on top of it all, the camera actually comes in this massive case. Again, I have two of them. There's so much crap that comes in here, it's even got a second compartment. I mean seriously, you got tons of cables, adapters, the charger, the camcorder itself, and there's even space for spare tapes and batteries. Oh, and again, since it uses VHS-C, it also comes with an adapter that lets you play them on normal VCRs. But also, you wouldn't even need to own a VCR either, because you can use the provided cables to plug the camcorder straight into the TV itself. It is nice, it all comes with the case and conveniently fits inside it, and you really don't see many things come with cases nowadays, let alone every possible wire and adapter you could need. But I will say, it can be a bit of a pain at first to remember where everything goes, exactly how it fits, and the absolute frustration of trying to close it and realize you messed something up. Along with the case, I also actually have a copy of the manual, which I must say is not only cool to flip through, but is almost mandatory to fully grasp some of the complexities of the camcorder. Overall, I think the JVC is fairly straightforward to use, like if you're a first timer without the manual then you could probably figure out the basic essentials like setting up the camcorder and filming, but I do think it can be a bit intimidating at first because they really crammed a ton of features and stuff into this thing. First off, you have the battery which is detachable and comes in a few sizes, but also even the viewfinder is detachable too and it has a diopter adjuster if you have glasses. You also of course have the adjustable hand strap, but it even comes with a matching red and black neck strap too. Pretty stylish. Now one thing I do have to say about the battery is, this is from the 80s, obviously, and it's so old it no longer holds a charge unfortunately. But luckily they included a little spot you can plug a wall adapter in, so I was able to actually go online and order a modern 9.6 volt battery, get some adapters, and plug it into this port. A little janky I'll admit, you know, I, I may get electrocuted at some point, but it works! You just gotta maybe velcro the battery onto the body somewhere. Someday what would be ideal is to actually cut open the original battery pack and essentially remove the old cells and place this new battery inside. That way it looks and mounts the way it should, but that's a project for another day. On the front you have your full range of VCR-like controls for the tape, play, pause, stop, fast forward, rewind. There's also a record button on the back where your thumb rests too. And loading the tape is done with this electronic eject button. Very high tech. Feels like I'm opening some spaceship latch. That's all the basic stuff, but there's still quite a lot more going on too. The lens has autofocus, but can also be manually focused too, and it also even has a zoom, including macro mode. The zoom can also be controlled electronically with a rocking switch. Unfortunately, this switch seems to be the only thing broken with my camcorder, but not really an issue. You have a microphone, of course, but it's actually removable, so you can plug in a different mic if you wanted. Of course, we still got more though. On the side of the lens here, you have a couple extra buttons. The white balance is automatic, but you can manually switch it to daylight or bulb. Then you have a fader for fading in and out your shots to black. Exposure is also automatic, but you have this BLC button, or backlight compensation, which can be used to brighten the image if your subject's backlit. And finally, you also have a headphone jack, a remote jack, a video output to plug into the TV, and this little SP and EP switch. Essentially this is like your quality selection, SP is standard, but EP will actually run your tape at half speed so you can record twice as long, but you will lose some quality. Okay, I think that's about everything, at least all the major stuff. So now I'm gonna take this thing out and get some test footage with it. And then from that, I'm gonna take what I learned and then make this authentically retro little cinematic from it. 
I went out and recorded four separate test samples, each in different situations to get some variety. So now I'll be showing some highlights here. Uh, one thing to note is I am admittedly kind of cheaping out rather than digitizing the footage with some adapter and software. I am gonna just hook the camera up to my TV, also from the 80s, and just film the footage off the screen there. So technically the footage isn't as clean or raw as it could be, but I mean at least this is a more authentic feel at what it would have been like to watch it back then. But honestly, I already dropped like 50 bucks on tapes and the battery setup, so I wasn't looking to spend another 50 on a digitizing kit when I don't even know if the footage is gonna look good or not. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is what the actual viewfinder looks like. It's really interesting because it's black and white and pretty washed out, making it kind of hard to judge what your footage truly looks like, but it's also really cool at the same time. It feels super Terminator or something, like you got retro robot vision. Anyways, the first test I actually did with the camera was a pretty appropriate one. My brother's band had their first house show they were playing on Halloween, so yeah, pretty sick way to test the camcorder. First couple notes, again, this is recorded off my TV, so it's not perfect, and does look a little better in person if I'm being honest, but I tried to just slightly edit the footage to accurately show what it looks like to me. And overall, I'm really impressed. It was super dark in there, and the low light performance and even color accuracy is shockingly good. Now, I mean, it is VHS, so like, it's clearly not amazing, but it is better than I expected. Also, there is no denying that for something like this, the VHS look just fits absolutely perfect. Seriously makes the show look straight out of the 80s or 90s, and it's authentic. It's not just some bad filter. It's legit. Now, just for comparison, I did shoot a song on my normal camera too, the one this review is filmed on, and it is clearly better in every way, no surprise, but mainly I'm just showing this so you can see what the show actually looked like. Back to the camcorder, the audio did come out pretty bad, but I don't think this is really the camera's fault because they were really loud and I was literally right next to all the amps and speaker, so in this case, I don't think many camera microphones would have performed much better to be honest, and again, this is just being played off my TV and recorded with a shotgun mic, so yes, I'm sure that's contributing to the audio loss as well, but Really, I don't think it's making much of a difference in this case. One thing I noticed while shooting is not only do the power zoom buttons not work, which I already knew, but the autofocus also seems to be busted. Now again, with both the zoom and focus, you can manually turn the rings to control them yourself, but it is kind of a bummer the electronics aren't working properly, especially because focusing isn't the hardest thing. The viewfinder actually gives you a little icon to let you know if you're in focus, but it's still just one extra thing to deal with while you shoot. So yeah, some shots are definitely out of focus because I didn't realize the issue until partway through. It's funny because my first camcorder had working zoom and autofocus, but didn't record properly, but this new one records, but doesn't zoom or autofocus. Maybe someday I'll have a camcorder that works 100%, but I'm not really sure I wanna dump in our 70 bucks to roll the dice again. Now for my second test, I did something way less exciting and just walked around downtown and shot some random stuff to test the daylight samples, which I have to admit, you look pretty darn stupid walking around public with this huge thing. Footage-wise though, everything looks decent enough. Again, it is a bit better in person, but one thing I do notice are some strange colors. You see some pink spots, which I think may be from the sun or a flare or something. I also did a lot of zoom tests and I'm pretty impressed with it. Though sometimes when you zoom way in, you definitely lose a lot of detail and the shots get washed out. 
Overall, not very interesting footage, but I think that's more my fault than the camcorder since I really just went around and got some more landscape samples rather than actual action or something going on. It's really strange because it all has a very PBS documentary vibe to it, which is funny. Like, I feel like I'm at my grandma's house back when I was a kid and she didn't have cable. Now, in our test I did that same day was some quick night shots of my car just to further see the low light in just a parking lot with some street lamps. Like the house show, the footage isn't amazing, but still surprisingly good and definitely fits a cooler vibe. I think low light just has a cooler look on VHS personally. Even the zoom held up surprisingly well. It wouldn't be a YouTube camera review without a little vlog test. Am I in frame at all? I can't tell. Um, this will be a good chance to test the mic as well, so hopefully it uh, sounds fine. Is this the ultimate vlogging camera setup? I guess we'll see. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cloudy out right now. It's kind of rainy, so not a ton of light in here, but you know, it's looking decent. Got uh, some guinea pigs munching here. Some retro VHS guinea pig action. Be sure to smash that like button if you want to see more retro guinea pigs in the future. Now that last test came out a bit strange. I had the white balance set to auto and it had the colors all completely off. Everything looks super cold even with how cloudy it was. The audio also isn't amazing, but sounds a lot better for normal voices rather than extremely loud house shows. Now, after doing all my tests and reviewing footage, I had a decent idea on how to use the camcorder and what to expect image-wise, so I got a little creative and put together a little cinematic shoot with it. It's a bit short, but I just wanted to film something cool to capture the sweet retro vibe. Anyways, here it is. The JVC GRC, whatever it's called, is an interesting little thing. As I mentioned before, the VHS camcorders don't get the same sort of love that film cameras get, and honestly, I can't say I'm surprised. Though the footage you get is very neat to watch, it is a bit of a pain to actually use the thing and then get your footage off of it when you're done. Plus, on top of that, Videos just aren't as important to people or easy to make and look back on in the same way photos are. But when you want a very specific aesthetic you're going for, the camcorder just really fits its niche perfect. I mean, I see so many people using grainy VHS filters on Instagram stories or other posts, but there is no true replacement for the real thing. I mean, even just filming my brother's show on actual VHS really blurred the lines of time and genuinely makes it hard to tell when the event actually took place. And I was actually there, but I'm still convinced this show was from decades before. I don't recommend everyone go out and buy one of these, but for the 1% of people who find this footage to look good, you can't turn back time, but you can rewind a tape. And in this case, I feel like rewinding it takes you back a little further than you'd imagine. If you're a true retro vaporwave aesthetic hipster, then these can be a fun thing to mess around with. <laughs> 